equilibrium is a state for a reaction basically um basically allowing for the reaction to go either direction so forward or reverse um, the reactants becoming products or backwards products becoming reactants and so equilibrium is a state at which those rates are equal like those are happening at the same time um, so we call it dynamic which means always changing uh, when two opposing changes occur at equal rates so again that's the forward reaction and the backwards reaction um, we can also see this in changes of states not just reactions um, sort of the basic level is changes of states so um, when we say something is melting we say it's melting going from a solid to a liquid uh, we say it's freezing going from a liquid to a solid but that happens at the same temperature so for example for water we know that water freezes at zero degrees celsius it also melts at zero degrees celsius so it's the same change just happening opposite directions so solid to liquid or liquid to solid it's happening at the same temperature so if you have water at exactly zero degrees celsius you have both states existing at equilibrium where the rate is equal to each other, one going from liquid to solid and the other going from solid to liquid. Um, again, that can happen anytime we have a change like that. So that would be like, a, we call it for water, we call it boiling, but vaporization going from a liquid to a gas and then condensation going from gas to liquid. Again, it's the same change. It's just going opposite directions, which means energy is going in or out. Um, in in the in the um in the vaporization process going from a liquid to a gas gases have more energy those molecules are moving faster so going from liquid to gas you are putting in energy condensation going from gas to a liquid you're cooling down you're releasing energy so when you're adding energy it becomes a reactant when you're releasing energy the energy becomes a product um when you're writing a reaction or as you can see on the slide when you're doing a change of state um, sublimation is going from a solid to a gas you can usually do that at low pressures um, is where sublimation takes place and you can see that going in from a solid state adding energy going to a gas state um, can uh, can happen as well I want to talk about this graph for a second so um we call this a phase diagram specifically this one is for water and this line right here that separates um um the solid liquid and gas um that line it goes backwards and that's because when water freezes it gets a little bigger um, a little less dense. Water is pretty much the only like compound that that happens for. Most things when they freeze, um, when they go from a liquid to a solid, they get smaller because their um, their uh, molecules become more tightly packed. For water, that's just not true. When those um, when the the liquid becomes a solid. Um, there's less movement in the particles, but there's more space in between them. So it gets a little tiny bit bigger. It gets a little less dense. And that's why this line sort of, you can see if you're looking straight at it, it sort of goes backwards. For most, um, most materials, it goes forward a little bit. So it's usually never straight up and down, but it goes a little bit backwards for water and it goes a little bit forward for um, all other compounds. Um, but again, this part over here where we're at low temperatures and a range of pressures but high pressures um, that's our solid phase this phase in between here is our liquid phase and then this phase down here is our gas phase at higher temperatures um, so we call it a phase diagram because it shows all three phases in a pressure temperature um, conversion Le Chatelier's principle is um, basically the idea that if a system is at equilibrium so if it's a phase change that's at equilibrium or a reaction that's at equilibrium um, because it can go both directions it's not a reaction going to completion because it can go both directions by adding or taking away energy or adding more reactant or adding more product or something like that um, it changes and then reestablishes a new equilibrium so that's what Le Chatelier's principle is is that when a system gets stressed so again that's adding 
energy in the form of heat that's adding um, more concentration of something, um, adding pressure or um, making the volume smaller. So those are all different types of stresses. And when that happens on a system, a new equilibrium is reached. So the reaction will go forward or backward the direction it needs to go in order to find a new equilibrium to minimize that stress. So the reaction will will tend to go away from whatever stress you added to the system. So ex for an example, when you add heat, if I'm adding heat to a system that's going from liquid to gas, that's going to force more ga more liquid particles to become gas. So there's going to be an initial shift toward the gas particles, but um, a new equilibrium will be released because that will make more of those gas particles again become liquid. Another way to um, stress a system we said is increased pressure. Um, sometimes we do that by making something smaller. So in this picture down below, we have like a larger container and then we increased the pressure by making the volume smaller. So pressure and volume have an inverse relationship. When one goes up, the other goes down. So when pressure is going up here, the volume got smaller, the volume went down. Um, so those two kind of work together. And again, depending on the molecules that can shift it one direction or another. Uh, the last stress that I mentioned, we said heat and we said pressure, also adding a concentration, and you don't see that um, represented here on this slide, but adding more concentration just means adding more molecules of um, one of either the reactants or the products that can also shift the, um, the, it can shift the reaction either direction. Um, so that's it sort of for these energy notes. In your notebook, I'll show you um, an example of how to uh, figure out um, Le Chatelier's principle, how to actually look at a reaction and then determine which direction it's going to go based on the change that was made.